Good morning. And a warm welcome to our service this morning. A welcome to any visitors or friends who are here to share in our worship this morning. Um, there's, I am told, significant snowfall outside of the town. And so some of our folks who travel in from the country are unable to get here today. And some others are stuck without electricity and so on out in Bodham and, and Cruden Bay and Hatton. Um, and they still have no power at this time. Um, so we remember folks that can't be with us this morning. And apologies for those of you who would normally receive your um, order of service by email. But um, Stuart and Anne's house has been without power since Friday afternoon. Um, and have been unable, therefore, to forward the emails via the email list. So we apologise for that. The um, intimations are as printed on your uh, order of service on the sheet. Uh, can I remind you, uh, tomorrow afternoon, the Ladies' Guild have um, meet in the large hall. And it's an open afternoon. Men and women are invited to come along, and it'll be a musical afternoon, and everyone, as we say, will be most welcome. The uh, church cafe on Wednesday, senior fellowships closed now. Bible study this week. The food bank collection, is, this is the last day for the, the food bank collection. Um, a family gift service next Sunday. So if you have toys, that you would be, like to bring, and they'll go to children in our area who otherwise perhaps wouldn't be getting a present this Christmas, then we would be grateful for gifts of new toys, unwrapped, please, um, and, and you can bring them next Sunday morning to the church. And as from next Sunday morning, there'll be two tables at the bottom of the hall so that if you wish, you can bring Christmas cards and leave them there for others and you can pick, them up, pick up your own, but it's, it's unmanned as such, so you need to go every week and have a wee look and see if there's cards there for you and, and take them away with you, please, when you, you do that. And next Saturday will be the Deacon's Court Church Family Christmas Tea. That'll take place at two o'clock in the church hall. Um, and we hope that you'll all come along to that. It's not a, a fundraising event, it's just a, a fine afternoon and it's open to everyone in the church and we hope you'll come along and, and meet together for a time of fellowship um, as we come towards the Christmas season. The psalmist writes, and he will endure as long as the sun as long as the moon through all generations. He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days, the righteous will flourish and prosperity will abound till the moon is no more. Let's worship God together and sing to his praise and his glory, our opening hymn, Hark the glad sound, the Saviour comes.
Let's pray together. Let's all pray. God our Father, as we gather into this, your house this morning, we come to give thanks to you, and we come to bring our praise and our worship to you. We come, Father, after the, the storm, the major storm of these last couple of days, and we know that in many parts of our town and our area there's been damage to, to property, but we thank, we're thankful, Father, that there's been no um, people have not been hurt through that in our area. We know that in other places that is the case, and we remember those families before you. But we thank you for your goodness and your grace that all the time that we were being battered by the, the wind, the fierceness of the wind, that you kept us sheltered in your presence. So this morning, as we come to worship you, we pray that you would reach out to bless us, reach out to strengthen us and renew us in heart, in mind, and in spirit. Father, we come confessing our sins. You know the things that are wrong in our lives. You know the things that stand between us and you. You know the, the, the thoughts of our mind and the, the things that are laid upon our hearts. So today, Lord, we pray that you would draw near to us and remind us that we need to be walking in your light and living in your love. Help and encourage each and every one of us, therefore, to, to do that, Lord, to, to live in your light and, and, and in your love, and help us in every way to seek to reach out to one another, sharing our lives with our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, that you might build us into one family, of believers. Lord, we ask that you would restore us in your sight. We ask that your grace would cleanse and, and renew us. And we ask that you would help us, each one of us, to play our part in the sending forth of the truth of your holy word. Lord God, we, we thank you today for this season of Advent, for this time that leads us up to Christmas and to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you would kindle within us a warmth, a peace, and a desire to serve you and to serve each other. May we all know your peace, your truth, and your love in the, this season. And may we know your guiding and leading spirit prompting and, and taking us today to where you would have us be. Draw near to each one of us in your goodness and grace and bless us for we would ask all of this in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray together as one family and to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I should have said at the head of the service that, of course, God willing, next Sunday we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper at both services. And, and can we ask you once again if you will please bring your own bread um, with you for that service. Morning, boys and girls. Hope you're all fine after the, the, the storm, and we've, we, we, we're, we're glad to see you back at, at Sunday school today. And this morning, of course, we've got the first candle lit on the Advent ring on the communion table. And what does that mean? How many weeks to Christmas then? Do you know? Four weeks to Christmas, four Sundays to Christmas. So we've, including today, then that is a countdown that, that for us each week we'll light one of the white candles and then at Christmas Day, just after midnight and Christmas Eve at the watch night service, the middle candle will be, will be lit just to, to remind us that, that, that Christmas Day has arrived. And it's, it's a, a, a way to help us remember how we are so close to Christmas. And it's a way to help us remember what it is that we're celebrating. Because what we're celebrating, of course, is the birth of Jesus. Now, we'll all be hoping that we're getting a Christmas present, are we? Who would like a Christmas present? Okay. Who wouldn't like a Christmas present? Everybody wants a present. There were no hands up. And, and so every, we all hope that we'll get a gift. No, it doesn't need to be a great big gift. Sometimes the smallest thing is the thing that's more, most important. Because what's important is that when we receive a gift is that we, we, we take it and, and just are, are amazed that somebody's thought about us remembered us, been kind to us, and has get, have given us something. It could be the smallest thing in the world, yet it could have a real meaning for, for, for all of us. Um, I remember I, I have a, a, a Bible in the house that I got when I went to, started going to Sunday school. Um, and so that means this Christmas That'll be quite a long time ago. Um, that'll be 60 years I've had that Bible. And gosh, I'm really quite old. And, and that um, is, uh, is, is, was given to me by my granny and granda. And it's in the, the room. And there's, you know, I'm sure everyone here, most folks here will have had one where the hymns were at the back of it. And there were colored pictures, uh, scenes from the Bible. And, and I suppose when I got it, um, I, was, I wasn't really able to read much of it, but you could learn from the pictures and so on that were there. And of course, the, when we read our Bible and when we come to church and when we, during this season that leads us up to, to, to Christmas Day, you're going to be learning at Sunday school. You're going to be, be preparing for the service that you're taking a, a part in in, in a few weeks time and we'll all look forward to that on the 19th I think it is of, of December and we'll all look forward to you doing that and, and reminding all of us of the, of the Christmas story you know boys and girls we don't need to find something new to say at Christmas time we're not looking to say anything new what we're looking to do is tell people of an old story, of a story about the birth of Jesus who came amongst us over 2,000 years ago and who lived and grew and worked and touched and healed and restored and died for us and who is alive for us today. And the importance of all of that is a reminder for all of us of all that took place in, on that first 
Christmas when God gave the world this amazing gift of his son, of the baby Jesus, into the world. So as it comes, and as, you, as, you, as it comes nearer, we'll light, different, we'll light candles every week. And as, as we come to the, the, the 19th of the month, we'll look forward to, to you telling us all about the, the story of Jesus, reminding us afresh of the story of Jesus, of his birth, and of all that God seeks to do for us, so that we, each one of us, can be blessed by what you tell us on that day, the birth of Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you this morning that we can meet together here in this place, and we thank you for our faith and our trust in you, and we thank you that you are near to us, even now. Help each one of us to be blessed by the, the, your word today. And, and as, as the, the Sunday school learn and, and begin to prepare for the service on the, the 19th, help them to know that they are sharing your great word of truth with every one of us here and with those who listen online at home. Help us all to know your goodness and your love, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing um, our, our second hymn, Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, for loving me.
turn now to God's Word. And our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament, from the book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 64, and at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 64, and reading from verse 1. Hear the word of God. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We, are, we all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and make us waste away because of our sins. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Your sacred cities have become a desert. Even Zion is a desert, Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and glorious temple, where our fathers praised you, has been burned with fire and all that we treasured lies in ruins. After all this, O Lord, will you hold yourself back? Will you keep silent and punish us beyond measure? Amen. And may the Lord add his blessing to this reading of his word, and to his name be all glory and praise. As we come to our prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, we, we've much to give thanks for that we've been brought safely, as we said earlier, through the, the, the storm. We might have some damage around us in our property or outside our property, but as, as the main thing is that we're all safe and secure. We, we remember those who are continuing to um, assist us with vaccinations, we remember those who are in hospital with coronavirus. We remember the work that's being done for this new variant that we're hearing about um, of, the, of the illness. And, and we pray that, that, that the Lord will lead us and guide us through this as he's led us and guide us thus far. So let's come before him now in our prayers. Let's pray together. God, our Father, we come humbly before you, asking for your leading, for your protection, for your guidance. We hear that there's a, another variant of the coronavirus that might be easy to pass on to each other. So in the days and the weeks that lie before us, help us all to be extra careful. Help us to remember the importance of wearing our masks, the importance of sanitizing our hands, 
the, the importance of self-isolating if we're not sure that we're fine or not. All these things so that we are not responsible for passing on any illness to anyone else. Help us to take that seriously and to, to work and to, in our own lives to, to help others at this time. Lord, we pray for all those in our NHS who continue to work in hospitals, working um, in wards and in intensive care units. We remember those who are confined to hospital at this time and in some places where their families can't even get to visit. And so we, we pray for those situations because they're hard and they're difficult to bear. We're thankful for those working in our vaccination centres and in our testing centres and for those who work in genomic sequencing where they can find out about the, 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 the spread or the growth of this new variant that might be there. We thank you for all the knowledge that you have imparted into us. Help us to use it to the benefit of all. But help us also as not to be afraid, not to be terrified to be doing whatever we would hope to do instead. Help us to be cautious and help us to know that you are ever present with us at every moment of the day and of the night. You never leave us nor forsake us. And we thank you for that. We remember those who are in nursing homes as well at this time, and, and the, the difficulties that there have been in our nursing homes, and we pray for all and for families who have loved ones there, and, and, and we, we pray that once again, Lord, your healing hand and your protection would rest upon them also. And for those carers who go in and out of houses looking after our loved ones who are at home, we remember them too. They too have a hard and difficult job to do. So we pray for them. We remember them before you, Father. We pray for those who are waiting for operations and procedures and waiting for a long time, it would seem. And so we, we, we pray that in due course they will be seen. We pray that soon our, our, our doctor's surgeries will open so that people can properly receive a consultation when they need that. We thank you for the life and the witness of the gospel. We pray for all who are seeking you today. Over these past months, we've prayed for two young men. We continue to pray for them. They're, 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 not, um, they're not in the same family. They're two separate households. But their needs are similar. You know who they are, Lord. And so we pray that you would help them at this time to take a step forward in you. Be near to them when life seems dark and hard. Be near to them when they feel crushed and pressed down. Be near to them every moment of every day and of every night. And we've been asked also, Lord, to pray for a, a young man called Ivor who is on a, 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 a ventilator and life support machine in the, the hospital, having come down with coronavirus. And we remember him and his family at this time. Lord, we do not know each other's needs. We don't know the situations that each and every one of us 
are in. We don't know how others are and what their needs are, but you do. So as we pray this morning, whether here or in the, our own homes or wherever we might be listening or watching this service, then we pray, Lord God, that you will help us to understand even more the needs of others. We give thanks for the children of the church. We pray for them as they begin to practice for their, for their service in a few weeks' time, and we thank you that they're willing to, to take part in that. We are mindful of our church organizations slowly beginning to close down over the, the Christmas and, and, and New Year break, and we, we, we pray for them in the days that are before us, and we pray for all our services that will lead us up to Christmas and beyond, that all we would do and all we would say would bring honor and glory to your holy name. Gracious and holy God, draw near to us then. Draw near to us now, for you know the burdens of our hearts. You hear our prayers, and in the silence we would wait on you. Father, you know all our needs, all our hopes, all our desires. Hear our prayers in Jesus' name. We pray for those who guard and guide and keep us. We pray for those who will leave the safety of the harbor and go to sea. And we pray that you will keep them safe and return them home. We pray for our families and for our friends and for all who are far off. Lord God, in your grace and mercy, bring them near, for we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. The hymn before the sermon, I am waiting for the dawning of the bright and blessed day.
Let's pray together. God our Father, as we turn our thoughts now to your word, so we pray you would open up your word of truth to each and every one of us. Open up your word of truth that we might know your will and your purpose, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we read from um, Isaiah, the book of the prophet Isaiah, um, from chapter 64. And we read the whole of the chapter, not a long chapter, only 12 verses in it. At this point, this is written round about 700 years before the birth of Jesus. It's written in prophetic language so that we can understand that it's pointing to the hope and the promise of God, pointing forward to the time when God will send his son, give his son into this world. It's written to remind us today of, of the promises of God. And at the very beginning of this time of Advent, then the place for us to be is in the Old Testament, where the promise of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is foretold in so many different ways. Advent, we, we are not a, a, a liturgical church. That's to say, we haven't got a lot of rigmarole in what we do. We, are, we, are, we, are, we would be classed as a low church. That's to say that the things that we do, we do simply without a lot of, of stuff round about us, a lot of, of, of um, tradition round about us. And, and, and that's important for us because that's who we are and that's how we mark. The mark of, of how we worship is all important. And this passage that we read today is, is a prayer. It's a prayer that the prophet is, is writing out of all that he's been given to say. The, the prophets of the Old Testament had a hard and difficult job. They would, be, they would be found most often in the marketplace or early in the morning or late in the evening at the main gate of the city, wherever they were, so that whoever was going past them would hear the message that God had given to them. And the difficulty was that Isaiah wasn't speaking about something that was going to happen the next day. He had no idea when he was testifying, when he was prophesying, how long it would be before God would, would work on those words and bring his son into the world. And it was 700 years, which in the Lord's time is nothing, but in human time is many generations. We are part of the church that waits for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. How long have we been waiting since the day that Christ was taken into, into heaven? And we, can, we continue to wait. And one of the, the things that we're reminded of in the Scripture is the necessity to wait. Now, in today's world, people don't like to wait. People are used to, to getting things almost instantly. My goodness, when you go on to order something, stuff, we, we need some um, D DVDs and plastic folders um, for the DVD ministry that goes out every week. And, and so we needed to order some this past week. And I ordered the plastic sleeves at six o'clock on, on whatever night it was. And they arrived at three o'clock the next day. The, the man brought them to the door 
Um, and and uh, the, I'm, I'm waiting on the discs, that, and it says that the discs will be delivered by the 18th of December, and there was an email yesterday to say that they're coming tomorrow afternoon, and they were just ordered a couple of days ago, and we're not used to waiting. We don't, you know, we go into a room, and we put our hands out to switch on the light, and it, and it comes on, unless the bulb goes, that is. But we're used to everything being pretty instant. But if there's one thing that we are called to do in our faith, it is to wait on the Lord. And time spent waiting on God is not time wasted. You know, there are many churches today who think that a waiting congregation is wasting their time. And we're not wasting our time. We're living and doing what the Word of God teaches us to do, to wait. Think of the psalm, I waited patiently on the Lord. And, and that's important for us to realize that waiting for God is an important part of our life because we can't order God to provide for us. We cannot say to God, I want tomorrow, God, bang. What's the, 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 who would think that that would take place? Not many of us, I'm sure. Instead, we, we prayerfully ask, and then we wait, and the Lord provides in His way and in His time. That's not a, a get-out clause. That's not words just to say. That's exactly how it is. But waiting on God is all important. And the psalmist knows this as he I'm uh, 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 sorry, the prophet knows this as he's making this prayer, because we, can, we know that, we know that he's been waiting, because there's this plea right at the start in verse 1, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. What is he praying for? He's praying for the Messiah to come. Now, we've said before that in the, the, the days of Jesus' ministry, 700 years later, um, in the temple, day and night without ceasing, there would be those who would pray for the Messiah to come. They would pray and pray every moment of the day, and, and, and almost in shifts, one lot would go in and they would, they would all pray and at the end of a period of time they would come out and the next group went in to a part of the temple and prayed and prayed and prayed, calling on God to send his Messiah. And in the time of Jesus, the Messiah was standing in their midst and their eyes were shut and their minds were closed and they couldn't see or understand. But the prophet here is speaking of the time that God will intervene in this world, that God will come down, that you would rend the heavens, that you would open the heavens up and reach down and come into our midst. Such a, an entrance that the, the mountains would tremble before you. you when, when Moses was, was up the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments, the Scripture testifies that the people below knew that God was speaking because the mountains trembled underneath their feet. They could feel the vibration of the Word of God. One of the, you know, in, in the church here, when we're, when we're singing the hymns and when, when the organists are playing and when there's 
good bass in the organ, then you can feel the floor of this pulpit shaking, and that's fantastic to feel that. That means that the, the music's deep and resounding, and, and, and it's, it, it's, it's great to feel that. And they're longing for God to come down so that the voice of God and the act of God breaking through the heavens will shake the foundations of the earth. And we know, we know from the New Testament that when Christ was born, the foundations of the world were shaken in every way. Verse 2, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. What is his prayer? That everyone, that every person and that every nation would come to know who God is, casting their idols aside. What is it that our world needs today? But Jesus Christ, the, a world that's so full of things, people think more of the possessions that they've got than they do about the things of God. The world in which we live is an unequal place where many have nothing and, and only a few have vast, vast wealth. That has always been the circumstance, of course. But we, the church of Jesus Christ has the task, has the duty to remind people of the, of the gift of God that money cannot buy. No one can buy salvation. You can't write a check out and hand over a piece of paper and say, thanks, and, 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 you know, uh, if, if, if I was to start, if we were to start handing you bits of paper saying, this is, this is, this will get you into the kingdom of heaven, you'd think I was going nuts. And it would be true, I would be going nuts, because we can't do that. There is no one who walks on this earth, no created creature above the earth or below it, who can take us into the kingdom of God. Only faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will do that. And so when he's calling here, he's, he's saying, you know, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. That is he's, he's asking, he's praying that God will, will be so visible in the lives of all, that people will turn and look and see and want to know more about the Son of God. Verse 3, for when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountain trembled before you. Just as we spoke about the, the Ten Commandments being given, and, and you know, when, we, when they did things, when God worked for his people, when God provided, God continues to work for his people. God continues to provide for us in amazing ways, in ways that we don't always see until a while afterwards. But our God is surely generous and loving and kind towards us because he carries us through and brings us nearer to himself. There's a desire here to tell the world that God is in his eternity and that he will in his time send his son into this world to bring hope to the hearts of all. Verse 4. Since ancient times, no one has heard no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who acts on behalf of those, all important words, who wait for him. 
So he, the, the, Sam, the, the, the prophet reminds us here that, that in all of the time that has come in the past, since, since before the Word was written down in a written form, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. All the others are meaningless, meaningless things. I've shared with, with you before. I, I, I remember going to a museum in Edinburgh and, and going in the door and going into this hall, and here was this absolutely enormous Buddha. And, and, and round about this Buddha, there was a wooden fence, a kind of picket fence thing. It was round about it. And it would have been about four foot high to stop folk going near it. And it said, fragile, do not touch. We have a God who is not fragile. And we have a God who draws near to us, so near to us that he lives within us so near to us that we can touch him. More importantly, he can touch us. He's not some man-made clay idol. He's a living God who seeks to live in your heart and mine, who seeks to guide our lives, who seeks to take us wherever he wants to take us for his sake and for his glory. And what is it we're being asked to do? The very thing we spoke of at the beginning of this sermon today, we're asked to wait on him, to wait for God. So we're being reminded again in the fourth verse of the need to be willing to wait. What does the scripture say? They who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up on wings as eagles. So waiting in God's not a waste of time. It's an essential to prepare us for all that we need to do. And waiting on God is, is what we do when we pray. When we, in our homes, we, we speak with the Lord, when we read the Word and we, we speak with God, then all our prayer time should not be about speaking. Part of our prayer time has to be about us listening and being still. Be still, as the screens say around the church before the service every Sunday, be still and know that I am God, that stillness that enables us to wait on God. Verse 5, you came to help, you came to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. You come and help us when, you know, when God does come and help us, and we know that when we do things, when we're walking in his footsteps, when we're doing what he's asking us to do, but when we continue to sin against them, you are angry. How then can we be saved? We have to turn away from the wrongs of our lives. Each and every one of us needs the cleansing of God within us. Each and every one of us has, has, has had a, a past. That's called human life. But God takes that past and wipes it out. It is no more. The problem is that there are always those who want to take you back to your past. And that's the time when for you or for me, we have to wait on God to allow God to remind us that our sins have been forgiven. You know, who remember your ways when we continue to sin against him, however, if we don't learn, if we continue to sin against God, then God 
will be angry with us. And then we need to ask ourselves, how can we be saved? How can we belong to God if we remain far away from Him? Verse 6, all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. He is reminding us of how easy it is for you and I to fall into temptation. How easy it is for us to forget the path that's, that's narrow and straight, and instead we can just wander off. We can be dragged away. We can be taken away by the things that, that are around us, sweeping us away. Over this past few days, with all the, the storm that we've seen, there, I, I, I know that many folk have, have lost different things from their garden or, or whatever. And, and I once had a fence around my garden, but I haven't got a fence anymore. It's, it's disappeared more or less. Um, and all that I've got left is cracked fence posts in the ground that are no longer there. But, but you know, and things have been swept away. I had an owl that sat in the garden and it was supposed to keep cats out and its head kind of um, kind of strangely biddles around in the wind. Well, its body's there because it's full of stones, but its head's away. I hope someone doesn't find its heads because it's a strange guy, strange looking thing. Um, two great big eyes looking at you and it's only a head. But, uh, uh, you know, and that's nothing really. It's nothing at all, but it serves to remind us how we can be swept away even when we would prefer not to be, we can be swept away. That's why it's important that we always have our hand in the Lord's hand. The psalmist writes, the Lord grasps by the hand. So it's important that in what we do, in our walk, that we walk with our hand firmly in the hand of the Savior. Verse 7, no one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins. And verse 8, yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. We are reminded how God is the one who fashions us and makes us. He takes us in our brokenness. When we come to Christ, He takes our broken lives, and He makes us new. He makes us brand new. That's why we talk of people being saved. That's why we, we talk of, of new birth. That's why we talk of being born again, because all these things make us new the hand of God taking the, the shape, taking us, but changing us as though we were clay, changing us so that we are in His glory and in His will. We are all the work of your hand, says the prophet, reminding us that God is the creator of all things. Verse 9, do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. And the, the, you know, the, 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 the prayer goes on to, to help us, to, to remind us that we all need to be looking to God don't be angry with us, surely, as our prayer with, before God. And Lord, don't remember our sins. What is it he says? I will remember not your sins. Look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. I'm going to stop there. What's important in this passage that we've looked at today is for us to realize 
that the hand of God continually takes us and leads us and guides us. That the, the will of God is that which, which leads us down the paths that to, to where we are today. Sometimes we fall, sometimes we stumble, but the Lord does not look on the outside. He looks upon our hearts. He sees our desire to serve him. He does not cast us out. Instead, he reaches down when we wait on him, and he lifts us up and enables us to move forward into the future with him. At the very start of this Advent season, there can be no more pa no passage that speaks more of the grace of God or the hope of faith than this in the prophet Isaiah's 64th chapter, where we are reminded constantly that waiting on God will bring us safely before him and that God who is our maker, remains with us at all times. Shall we pray together? God our Father, we thank and praise you for your great word of truth, for the hope of the message of truth. Help us today to know your will and purpose in our lives, Help us to seek to live our lives for you and live our lives in you. Help us to wait on you and in waiting to be satisfied. For we would ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We would sing together our closing him the advent hymn o come o come emmanuel and ransom captive israel
now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you, upon your homes, upon all whom you love in this place and elsewhere, this day and for evermore.